So we've been playing around with our playback configuration. And you'll notice now the configuration that was assigned was default. And it has this little asterisk in the naming. What that asterisk means is that we've changed our uh, playback configuration in some way. And uh, I want to keep my default configuration untouched. So rather than saving my default configuration with these new changes I've made, I'm actually going to create a new playback configuration and I'm going to give it a unique name. For starters, I'm going to call it 5.2.5 .5 because that's the sound set that I'm basing it off of. I'm going to say VDL because that's the sound set that I've assigned. And I'm going to say 16 sounds. The reason I'm saying 16 sounds is because, let me just save this, in every active instance of Contact Player 2, when we're using it as a plugin like this, you can load up to 16 sounds in that instance. So you'll see now that we've created this new playback configuration, we have a 5.2.5 .5 version of Virtual Drumline that uses 16 sounds. So I'm going to take this just one step further so you can see the distinction between 16 sounds or a situation where we might actually need more than 16 sounds. So I'm going to go over here, select another instance of Contact Player 2, activate it, and now you'll see we have a second instance of Contact Player 2 available to us. It already assigned the VDL sound set 5.2.5, .5, which is what I want because I want both of these instances of Contact Player 2 to choose its instruments from Virtual Drumline. And again, since what we've been tweaking around with our playback configuration, you'll notice up here in the playback configuration menu, we have our asterisk saying that we've made some changes. So I'm going to create a new configuration, give it a unique name. This will be Again, 5.2.5 .5 VDL, but instead of 16 sounds, this configuration is going to use 32 sounds because we have 2 times 16 each. We can keep taking that further. We can do 3 instances at uh, 48 sounds. Here's something else you may want to do. Uh, let's add another instance of Contact Player 2. Activate it. And let's say we're working on a band score where we have some brass instruments and woodwind instruments that are necessary. In our third instance of Contact Player 2, this is where we want our brass and woodwind sounds to be drawn from. And since there are no brass and woodwind sounds in Virtual Drumline, we don't want in this instance of Contact Player 2 to use Virtual Drumline. Instead, we're going to use a library that does have brass and woodwind sounds. So my easiest choice here is going to be Sibelius Essentials, the library that comes with Sibelius, because it does have a collection of good woodwind and brass sounds. So now we've assigned this instance to use Essentials and all its various options. And these first two instances will choose sounds from Virtual Drumline. Again, we see our asterisk here saying that we've made changes to our playback configuration. So let's save this as a new one. Uh, we will have 32 sounds available in Virtual Drumline, but we're going to have Essentials now, which is going to be used for other instruments, whether they be strings, synthesizers, woodwinds, brass, you name it. And because there's only one instance of Essentials, uh, going to be able to use 16 sounds. So we'll just call it Essentials 16 Sounds. Okay, so this is our new playback configuration. And here you can see that that's now assigned. So it's, uh, it's a good idea to maybe have a few different playback configurations on hand for the varying needs of different scores and different projects you may be working on. And if I just have a small score that I'm just writing for maybe battery, say I'm writing a cadence for drumline, I'm just going to select my VDL 16 sounds configuration. And now I only have to load one instance of Contact Player 2. That can, that can preserve a little bit of memory. It's going to take less time to load, and it's just generally going to operate a little bit more quickly. If I'm using a big score that uses you know, brass, woodwinds, synthesizers that can be drawn from essentials, and uh, a number of 
VDL sounds, I'll select this sound set. And when I select that, you'll see over here, we have multiple contact players that load in. So that's basically how you go about creating playback configurations, editing playback configurations, and understanding the importance of assigning the proper sound set over here in the sound set column to its accompanying contact player two. Once you've assigned your playback configuration in the playback devices window here, you're ready to get into your score.